Hi, Joe here from Shutterspeak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling faces again here on YouTube. Have you ever wanted to create a time-lapse movie of a sunset or a sunrise or a cityscape, but you weren't really sure how to get started? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make a really fabulous time-lapse movie using the interval timer mode setting on your Nikon Z camera. Now, if you own a Nikon Z camera, you have two options for making a time-lapse. Option one is using time-lapse movie mode, and it's a great tool for the beginner, or if you just want an easy uh, time-lapse movie, because in the end, you're left with the time-lapse movie file. Using interval timer shooting, you're left with a series of images, but the advantage to that is you can then import those series of images into your favorite editing program like Lightroom or Camera Raw, and you can make creative adjustments to those images. You can change saturation, uh, vibrance, contrast, etc., until you're happy with the way the images look, and then you can import them into Photoshop and export it as a video. And you also have the advantage of exporting that video in as many formats as you want. So you could export it in 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, etc., as many times as you want, because you're left with those series of images and not just the single movie file. Now, in addition to that, I'm also going to show you how to make some of these very expensive looking edits as well. So sometimes you're going to see, um, you know, these, you'll see ads online for these expensive camera sliders and rotators that, that add motion to your time-lapse movies. And those are great and they work and they do everything that they're supposed to do. But if you don't have the money to purchase something like that, I'm going to show you how to do that using just some simple desktop tools that will create that motion for you within your movie. So with that being said, I'd just like to say thanks for watching this video. If anything in this video helps you out, please help me out by hitting subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of future updates to this channel. That would help me out and it's something that you can do that's nice for somebody that doesn't cost anything. So now that that's all out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so in the menu system of your Nikon Z camera, go to the photo shooting menu and select interval timer shooting. It's pretty far down. Uh, select that and you'll see a series of options that open up for interval timer shooting. Now the first one is obvious. Choose day and time. Start date and time. You can choose now or you can set it in the future. Choose your interval and it's going to be in hours, minutes, and seconds. Choose how long you want your interval to be. Typically, about five seconds is a good choice, but that's going to be up to you and your situation. Next, you're going to go to probably the most confusing menu, and that's interval times shots times interval. So, essentially, this is how long you're going to shoot for. And the first series of four numbers is the amount of shots you're going to take, and then how many shots you're going to take in each interval. So in this scenario, we have 800 shots, and we're going to take one shot at each interval. And you see down at the bottom the end time that'll tell us when it's going to finish. So exposure smoothing is something that I recommend you keep on. Silent photography also something I recommend you keep on. Now the interval priority, that's going to be something again that I recommend you also keep on. That's going to basically tell the camera, do I shoot when the interval is up or when the exposure is up. Uh, focus before each shot should be off. Um, interval timer shooting. You have a couple of options there. You can leave that to off and the storage folder. You can make a new folder. Should you feel the need for that, it's probably not a bad idea to keep all your images in a new folder. So just tick that checkbox there and it'll ask you if you want to save the settings. Hit OK say yes and they'll go into a new folder for you. So that's all there is really to setting up the menu and once you have that just scroll up to the top and select start. Okay so I've gone ahead and shot a bunch of images uh, for a sunset scene not far from where I live. It is winter time here so it's not the most spectacular sunsets that we could hope for in, in terms of what we'd see in, in summertime and things like that, but still a pretty nice sunset. And one of the nice things about it was there's a lot of clouds moving through the sky and there was 
a pretty substantial wind out there. So we're going to have a lot of clouds moving through our time lapse. Now I brought them all into Lightroom, but you don't have to use Lightroom. You could use whatever photo editing application that you have that you're familiar with and that you like. And now what I can do is I can go through here and I can apply maybe different color profiles. Um, again, I've, I've done some basic adjustments here. I might be able to maybe bring up the clarity a little bit, maybe uh, the saturation. And especially I want to look at this area here where the sun is going down. Now, I did show up about an hour before, and this is pretty much where I started. You see the sun was up there. Okay, but I don't want to work on this particular image. I want to work on the more dramatic section and I'm going to synchronize those changes. And I'm working on the more dramatic section because this is kind of the, the grand finale of the time lapse. So just to go over quick what I did, I went out to this location um, about an hour and a half prior to sunset. I looked it up on my phone so I knew what time sunset was. I knew that the sun set over this section of water, so this was a good location. I used the settings that we set previously when we were going through the menu. So this is set at about 800 photos every five seconds. Okay. Um, I did shoot at F8. Okay. Um, ISO 100 and 14 millimeter on my uh, 14 to 30 millimeter lens. And again, I ended up with a series of about 850 images or so. Now, when you're going through the menu settings and setting this up, Okay, you're going to be able to see what time this series of images that you're shooting through the interval timer is going to finish. So by doing that, being that I already checked and I knew what time sunset was going to be, and I knew I was there at least an hour and a half before, I could set an interval that would put me a little bit past the finish of sunset. And you can see when my image group finishes up, the sun has completely set and that's where I'm finished. So again, I'm going to do all, all of the things that I want to do in here and, and you can apply some color grading if you wanted to. Uh, you could do some vignetting, uh, you know, you could apply whatever presets, but it, I would really tend to work somewhere in, in this area. Oops, a little bit lower when the sun is kind of at that, that most grand point when the sun is just about to set and there's the most color in the sky. So. And again, however you want to apply this, you know, uh, it's totally up to you. And, and that's, that's kind of what gives you that advantage of using interval timer, because now we have all this creative control that we would not have had if we had used time-lapse movie mode. Not that time-lapse movie mode is not a great um, tool to have, it is, but this just gives us more control. So now when we're done, we're going to export this. Now I want to do a 4K time-lapse. So I'm going to export this about 20% larger than what I actually need. And one of the reasons why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to create some motion inside of Photoshop so that when we export the movie, it looks like we had one of those expensive rail systems. So it's going to move left to right a little bit and it's going to zoom in a little bit. Um, I'm going to move left to right because the sun travels this way. So it's going to look like the camera was moving this way along with the sun. Okay. And it's also going to zoom in. So it's going to look pretty cool when we're done. And, um, so, so again, figure 4k is uh, 3820 on the long edge. Okay. I'm sorry, 3840 on the long edge. So I'm going to export this at about 4,200 pixels on the long edge. Okay. And I'm going to export this as JPEGs at 96 DPI. And I'm going to, when I export this, I'm going to also apply a little bit of compression to these JPEGs so that we're working with smaller images. So we're not going to work with the raw images in Photoshop. I mean, there's about 850 of them, but just to keep everything moving faster, there's no reason for us to use these raw images in Photoshop. We can use the JPEGs and it's going to work just fine. Again, we're going to export them a little larger than what we need for 4K to give us a little bit of room to, to pan and zoom inside Photoshop when we create the time lapse. Um, and again, we're going to apply a little bit of compression, 96 DPI, because 
We're not printing these. We don't need 240 or 300 DPI. Screen resolution. Most typical screens are 96 DPI. And very, very old screens are 72 DPI, but no reason to go that low. So let's go a little bit higher. And we're going to match that. Uh, so like I said, we have reasonable file sizes for Photoshop to work with. All right, so let's export these. I'm going to do that now. It's going to take probably about an hour or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this now, and then we're going to jump back in when we're ready to load the images in Photoshop. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I've exported my images from Lightroom, and I am now in Photoshop. And again, you did, if you didn't have Lightroom, that's okay. You could use whatever your favorite image editor is. It doesn't have to be Lightroom. It's not really going to make a difference. But for this step, you're going to need Lightroom. So I've navigated to the folder that I have exported my time-lapse images to. I did export them as a sequence, so you can see they're numbered 1 through 849. Okay, and that helps Photoshop build the time lapse. So it's important that you do number them as some form of sequence. So you just have to select the first image in the group and hit image sequence and say open. And now this pop-up is going to ask you the frame rate, 30 frame rates, 30 frames per second is okay. You have a bunch of common frame rates in the drop down, but it really doesn't matter what you pick here because you have the option to change this again later. But I am going to select 30 frames per second. Photoshop is now going to open up these images, and it, is, it does open up as a timeline, but if you don't see this timeline window, just go to Window and select Timeline. So if yours opens up like this, it's okay. Just go to Windows, Window, select Timeline, and you'll see the timeline. So this is now your time-lapse video right here, okay? And you can actually just scroll right through it, and you will see how it has created the time-lapse for us. And you can see the whole sunset all the way through. Okay. So if you were happy with it at this point, you could just go to File, Export, and then select Render Video. And you can export this as a video. However, we did mention wanting to add some motion and some zooming into this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, again, don't forget we have oversized this intentionally. Okay, so in order for us to add some effects to this, there's a couple of things that we need to do. So I'm going to run you through those steps. First, you're going to go up to Image, select Canvas Size, and this is your current canvas. We're just going to change it to 3840 by 2160. Okay, and say OK. And it's going to create some clipping. We understand. That's fine. Okay, so now that we've selected the image size, and I've chosen that image size, by the way, because that is 4K resolution, and that's what we want to export this as, as a 4K video. So now it's sized perfectly to be a 4K image. Now, the next thing I want to do is go over to layer one, and I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to say Convert to Smart Object. Okay, so click Convert to Smart Object and you'll see the timeline turns purple. Now we can add effects to it if we want. So let's go ahead and just click this little arrow. You see this arrow, arrow right here, and this is our effects arrow. So we can click this, and that's where motion is. Okay, and you can just pick this drop down. You have a couple of options. You have pan and zoom, pan, zoom, rotate, rotate and zoom. So pan is moving side to side. Zoom obviously is zooming in and out, right? So I said what one of the things that I wanted to do with this was I wanted to move, make it look like we were moving side to side and zooming in simultaneously. So I'm going to pick pan and zoom. Okay, and now this little dialog comes up and it's asking us which way do we want the motion to go. So I'm going to rotate this to right around there. I'm actually going to make it negative 145. That's what I want. You can type that right in there. And so now the way you have to think of this is think of the outer edge of the circle the starting point, and it's going to move towards that inner point. Okay, so that's the direction that the motion is going to go. So it's going to go from left to right and zoom in. Okay, so now if we kind of scroll through this, you're going to see the motion take place. And there you go. You can see how we're zooming in with the motion going from left to right. And I kind of chose that way because the sun was moving from left to right, and I thought it would kind of keep the sun in that same position in that, that one-third area. So that was my reasoning for that. 
Okay, so one of the things that really makes a time lapse is having some good audio that goes along with it. So you're definitely going to want to add audio, and Photoshop makes it really easy for you to do that. You can just go right over here to the audio track and click on the down link here, and you'll see add audio pops up. Okay, I have some audio downloaded already. Let me find that. There it is. Okay, we're going to take this one, 30 seconds. Now it's a little bit longer than our clip, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this right to the end here. And making sure that this is highlighted, you'll see the white lines around it. I'm just going to go right over here and hit go right over to here. And just say delete audio clip. And now it's gone. And then one of the other things I can do is fade this out because I did clip it a little bit short. So I'm going to click on this little green arrow right here and I'm going to fade it out. I'll fade it out maybe two seconds before. So this video is about 28 seconds long. So let's say about 26 seconds. That looks good. And so the audio should start to fade out about two seconds before the video ends. Okay, so before we export this video, there's one last thing I'd like to show you. One of the things that you're going to want to do is add a fade to black at the end of the video. That way it doesn't just abruptly stop, it kind of fades off. So easy way to do that is just go right over here to this kind of black and white square. Click on that and you're gonna see fade with black and you just take it and drag it right to the end of our video, right there. And that's gonna give us a fade to black at the end. So as we come across, you're gonna see the video fade away. And that, that's much nicer than that just abrupt ending. So now at this point, we're ready to do our export. Go up to File, to Export, and then Render Video. And now this dialog is going to come up, and we just have to name it. Okay, Time Lapse Video. Um, you can select the folder that it's going to go to. H.264 is a great format. Um, H.265 would be better, but we don't have that available, so we'll stick with H.264. High quality, 3840 by 2160, 4K resolution. And remember how I said about the frame rates. We can change the frame rates at this point, again, if we wanted to, but we selected 30 from the get-go, and that's what's here now. I mean, I would try and do it based on what you think you're going to export, but just keep in mind that you can change this, and, and this does give you the option to change um, and export a whole bunch of different formats. So again, this is one of the reasons why this is a good choice, perhaps over time-lapse movie mode, because again, we can change our resolution size here. We can change our frame rates. We can change the quality. So if we wanted to upload this, say, to Instagram, we can't upload a 4K video to Instagram. We'd have to make it much smaller. So we could change the, the file size here to, to whatever we needed it to be. We could change the frame rate, so if we wanted it more cinematic, we could change it to 24 frames per second. Just more options here, um, more ability to kind of do custom things. So once we're all set with everything and we're happy, just hit render, and it's going to take it a little while, and you're going to see an export dialog come up. And once that export dialog comes up, what we'll do is we'll uh, take a little break, and there it is, and as soon as this is finished, We'll bump back into the video and I'll show you the finished product. So, see you in just a second. Okay, so now that our video is exported, let's check it out. Oh, and before we do, just want to say thanks for watching. I hope you uh, found this video useful. And if you did, please do me a favor and just uh, hit the subscribe button. That's a great way of saying thanks. So, I appreciate you watching this. Enjoy the time lapse. Bye bye, YouTube.